Hi traders, welcome to this video. Um, today I want to show you how I analyze a story behind a stock. Um, I want to do this uh, with three examples, Nvidia, AMD and Infi. And um, yeah, first of all, how I um, how it discover stocks like Nvidia, AMD and Infi. Well, I personally always look um, on technical strength if I want to find stocks. You can see that all, all three stocks have one thing in common on the technical side. And uh, this is they have an, a relative strength rating from IBD above 95. So I look for very, very strong stocks and um, yeah, um, an RS rating above 95 shows me that the stocks belong to the top 5% of all stocks uh, tracked by IBD. And this is um, how I discover the most stocks. And then I, yeah, I jump deeply into the analysis of the fundamentals and also um, of the story behind the stock. And um, yeah, I, I found these three stocks and uh, they are all from the same industries. They are all from the uh, semiconductor um, sector and uh, from the semiconductor industry. But the theme behind um, those three stocks is not um, semiconductors itself. It is a different theme. Now, you maybe know NVIDIA from your graphic cards inside your computer and maybe you have an AMD laptop um, which you are using for trading and um, I'm very sure if you are not an experienced stock trader, you never heard about Infi. Um, but these stocks have one thing in common. And um, yeah, it took me some time to uh, go through a lot of um, a lot of investor presentations and uh, also press releases um, of the um, of the published earnings numbers, um, and then I find the common theme behind all the three stocks, and the common theme is data center. Um, all three stocks are highly engaged in the data center business, and. Um, you can see that NVIDIA has a very, very good uptrend here in 2016, 2017, 2018. And there was a lot of discussion about that NVIDIA was engaged in um, AI and in um, also in automotive and, and autonomous driving. But if you look at the numbers of NVIDIA today, um, the sector from autonomous driving and also the AI components, they they only have a very, very low share of the revenue from NVIDIA today. And um, if I look into the investor presentation from NVIDIA here, I found one thing what um, I find very interesting. And this is here, the second box, it's data center. Um, today, around 27% of the NVIDIA um, revenue is coming from the data center um, sector. And you can see that the three-year compound average growth rate of this segment um, from NVIDIA is um, at 53%. So it's the fast growing segment from NVIDIA. And you can see that NVIDIA is a, lear um, is a leader in deep learning and AI. And with that, um, or it's, it's not that they produce algorithms or something like that. No, no, they are producing um, graphic cards which are needed in data centers to proceed algorithms for deep learning and AI components. And there's a theme behind that. And this is um, the theme accelerating GPUs. Uh, GPU is a graphic processing unit and NVIDIA is specialized in that. And um, 
GPUs, um, yeah, uh, GPUs are used in big data centers to run all this um, visualization and all this image recognition and AI learning stuff. And they are um, used to uh, support the CPUs, central processing units of the computers. And um, in future, more and more GPUs are used uh, to support um, the CPU architecture. And this is what drives the growth here from NVIDIA. It's not about automotive. You can see 6% of the revenue is from automotive and it's only growing at 13%. So this is very, uh, very small. And it's also not gaming. Gaming is today the, the biggest segment from NVIDIA, but it's also only growing at 11%. And professional visualization, this is around yeah, entertainment, engineering, construction, uh, very specialized, um, very specialized applications of their uh, graphic cards. And um, yeah, the biggest growth is coming here from data center. Um, this is very very interesting, and Nvidia also bought one additional uh, one one another company in the last months. Uh, it was Melanox, and Melanox is also a company which is specialized in data uh, and data center interconnection. I will explain that uh, with Infi. After I found this piece of information, I um, yeah I looked uh, behind. Um, AMD and you know AMD everyone knows AMD from the um, from the laptops and uh, yeah from your desktop PC or whatever but um, AMD is highly engaged also in data center and they are one of the um, or is the second largest graphic card producer in the world and now you can see the link between Nvidia and AMD both are focused on data center both are producers of graphic cards and um, yeah you can see here in the investor presentation from amd amd data center focus they want to become a very very relevant player inside the data uh, center um, sector and they are they are focused here on cloud and enterprise uh, machine intelligence, so machine learning, AI, and um, also other things. And they are producing not only graphic cards, which are used um, for as GPU units um, for AI and machine learning stuff, but they are producing um, also CPUs. And um, the CPUs are, are used in data centers and um, AMD grew very fast in the in the data center segment, and they have today a share, a market share of around seven percent. In two, 2017, they started with one percent, then they grew to five percent, and now they have seven percent. And you can see this is a very very strong growth in the data center um, sector. Um, yeah, here you can see they are producing leading processors. They introduced a new, a new um, series of processors. I must admit, I don't have any clue about the details of this, um, of the processors or of the GPUs. So this is not my job. My job is really to discover the theme behind the companies and to discover why are the charts. Um, and why are the technicals of those stocks so strong? I want to know the reason. And this is why I go so deeply into the uh, companies behind that. Yeah, you can see um, in the investor presentation, um, data centers um, have multiple slides. And here you can see also the GPU lineup. So the graphic processing unit lineup. And um, they come or they provide the Radeon um, graphic cards here. You can see that it's used in the Microsoft Azure uh, cloud. Um, um, yes, and uh, you can see the data center growth from um, AMD. They are also engaged in supercomputing and of course in cloud 
computing and enterprise solutions. Here's a roadmap. So you find a lot of information inside, um, inside the investor presentation about the data center. And they want to become the new data center leader. Um, yeah, we will see if this is uh, successful or not. So then um, we had a third stock in the group, um, in the semiconductor group, and this is Infi. And Infi, I can open here the chart from Infi. Um, and you can see that, that it's also very strong, has a relative strength rating of 97%. That's very good. You can see that Infi has a very good um, estimations for the next years and for this year. So the EPS will grow fast. They are 20% above the sales from last year. So they had some good, um, some good uh, fundamentals. I personally don't like the chart here. This is too. This is very volatile. Um, yeah, but maybe this will now um, get better or improve when the markets uh, start to rally back. Okay, Infi. What is Infi doing? They are specialized in data center interconnections. So you must imagine if you have multiple data centers and you want to connect them on a very, very, um, yeah, you want to um, connect um, the data centers um, with a very, very fast connection, then Infi provides a solution. And they provide multiple solutions so um, for interconnection between data centers up to 100 kilometers. So really um, two data centers and they want to uh, and you want to, to connect them. And they also provide um, solutions for uh, interconnection inside a data center. And you can see um, those components from Infi are used in multiple in multiple um, areas. So cloud computing, 5G, um, of course, everyone writes into the presentation, virtual argument reality, artificial intelligence, and so on and so on. And uh, here you can see also um, the traffic growth inside these um, sectors. And you can see that, for example, cloud business here, 44% estimated growth and IoT 107%. And then you can see 5G only 23%. You know, a lot of people are talking always about 5G, but if I go through every 5G company, no one has good fundamentals and no one shows yeah shows some signs of growth or demand for 5g components so maybe this theme uh, will need some years until it really took off but currently we are in the data center theme and the components um, from from infi are also used in telecommunication i will go into this um, in a minute. So, and here you can see the sales from um, components from optical interconnects from um, Infi. And you can see that the sales growth here is coming from the cloud business. So Infi is selling a lot of interconnections to cloud companies or to data centers. And Infi uh, not only provide for cloud business solutions, but also for telecom. So if you want, for example, connect yeah, telecommunication centers together, you can use a similar technology and you can see that this is also needed for 5G, for example, to connect um, those centers together. One interesting thing is that um, Nvidia um, bought Melanox uh, some months ago. I already said this in the NVIDIA um, part. And this is inter interesting because Melanox and Infi do very similar stuff. And um, now NVIDIA is also uh, going into the interconnection business. And this will also um, provide maybe some fuel to the um, growth of NVIDIA. And this is very interesting because they are currently also thinking about how, how to 
uh, do interconnections uh, in all these GPU applications. Okay, um, let's go back to the charts uh, for a second. I already showed Infoi. Um, let's look to NVIDIA um, for a second. And you can see the uh, NVIDIA also have very good estimates for the next two years. They grew strongly in EPS and also in sales in the last uh, quarter. They have a very good um, EPS growth rate over the last five years and also a very good uh, return on equity here. So very, very good um, fundamentals. What I don't like personally is I, like, I don't like this uh, big volume here on the negative um, side, so distribution. And what I don't like is uh, it's a big company, you know, 160 billion and also have a lot of shares. Um, outstanding and in float so it's a very uh, mature company and but uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe Nvidia also have some uh, fundamentals uh, some some potential if you for example compare that to Intel uh, which is the number one um, chip maker in the world and Intel also provide similar solutions is not so specialized but provide also some similar solutions uh, like NVIDIA and of course like AMD. Um, let's look at the chart from AMD for a second. AMD only has around, has around uh, 56 um, billion market cap, so it's a little bit um, smaller than, um, than NVIDIA and also has very good um, estimates here, 70%, 42%. This is very good. You can see that the EPS, the yearly EPS is also up uh, very strongly in the last years here. This is a good sign. And um, also, um, like Nvidia, AMD has uh, had very good um, earnings and very good sales growth here in the last quarter. Um, yeah, these are three candidates. There is one another candidate, and this is Sienna. I want to um, go to Sienna. Sienna is also doing interconnections between data centers, so very similar to Infi, but you can see the RS rating is not so strong, the estimates are not so strong, and also the other um, the other fundamentals are not so strong like NVIDIA, uh, Infi, and AMD here. Um, yes, I hope this video helped you a little bit to um, see what I'm looking for. You know, I'm always coming from the technical side and look where is technical strengths. So what are institutions buying? And then I go deeply into the fundamentals and go deeply into the story. And I always try to find the link and um, yeah, the link between multiple companies in the same sector. So I want to know what what is the theme. I want to know what is the story behind the companies which are coming up into uh, in my uh, scanners. And um, yeah, I spend the most time uh, the most time of my trading um, with this discovery of stories and fundamentals and. Um, yeah, to find a theme behind stocks.